This time on Norfolk Perspectives, we talk about Habitat for Humanity right here in Norfolk and the role that it plays in your community. Steel Timber Sports Series is coming. I can't believe it's going to be a scope. It's going to be so awesome. And Nauticus Spy Ship is back again this year. You're not going to miss it. And then a cookbook update from Friends of Norfolk Animal Care Center. And Enzo is in the studio. Stay tuned right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher, and I've got Habitat for Humanity, Wayne La Lavender, right here on the sofa. How you doing? Hi, Bob. Hi, Norfolk. It's good to be here. It is good to have you here, and you're fairly new with Habitat, aren't you? Uh, I've been at this affiliate for eight months now. started back in August, and I'm loving every day, every minute of it. Okay, now I kind of sold you onto the sofa when I said you're new, because you've been a volunteer for a long time. Yeah, my days with Habitat go back to 1990s. Uh, I'm from Connecticut, and lived most of my life up there and work with the Habitat affiliate up there. Uh, got on the board of directors, eventually was president of the board. Uh, we built some houses. I've worked with Habitat in Virginia and in my travels around the world. I did some Habitat work in Brazil and also in Mozambique. So it's, kind of, my, it's kind of in my blood. It's yeah, my blood. I would say so, but I guess you just kind of broke all kinds of myths that I had in my head, that I thought Habitat was a local event, um, maybe national. I know the Carters were involved in it, but it's international? Uh, Habitat is international. It's in about 70 different countries around the world. Together we've built uh, 8 million houses. Uh, it's an incredible ministry uh, begun by the Fullers in 1970s, in 1976. It became famous when the Carters joined in 1984. Mm -hmm. Our affiliate right here in Norfolk, our headquarters is in Norfolk, was founded in 1988. So we're in our 26th year. During those 26 years we've built or rehabbed 200 homes in this in the Southampton's uh, Rhodes area. Awesome. I know I've got several friends from our church who are active in, in uh, Habitat and, and are always out there swinging the hammer and in the heat of the sun, building houses from scratch. And I said, man, I don't know, that's ambitious for me and I can't swing a hammer. So something tells me that's another myth in my head. Uh, we, we take people of all skills and all levels. And we have just common laborers. Uh, often at sites, I will clean up. So anybody can clean up. Uh, today we use uh, we use hammer guns more often than or nail guns more often than hammers. So they're pretty easy too. You know we do training on them. You get it, you line it up, you pull, and the the nail is taken care of by itself. So we find everybody can do that, and people love doing that as well. Cool. Okay, now let me be candid. You got a bunch of volunteers that show up at a site, and they're going to build a house from scratch. How do you know the quality is going to be there? Yeah, we have a construction manager. You've been asked that question before. We have, yeah. We have a construction manager who oversees all our construction projects. And then we have site supervisors who are trained, who are professional carpenters who work for 30 years in the field. And then we have a, a, a volunteer set of people. We call them our red hats. They're often retired uh, Navy people, but uh, anybody who, who has been working with us for a period of time, who knows the habits that story, who can demonstrate some expertise in some different uh, portions of doing construction. Okay. We call them red hats. They're team leaders. They oversee four to six people each day, make sure the work is done properly and correctly. And what, you know, what we found is Habitat homes are as well built or better than other homes because we have volunteers, because we supervise, because mm -hmm. everybody wants to do as a mission. We're not cutting any corners. We're not doing anything wrong. We're doing it uh, right from, from the very first nail. So when I show up on the scene, you're going to assess my talent and see where it's the best place. You'll tell me. us what you can do, but we'll have a safety training. We'll make sure everybody is comfortable with what they're doing, and we have a training so that people, you know, are exposed to different trades, and, uh, you know, somebody be over your shoulder while you get the, the, hack, uh, the, the sense of what you're doing. Now, the other myth, I think, uh, when I think of Habitat, I think of a, a blank lot and then a week or two weeks later there's a there sticks up in a, in a new house but you kind of slipped in there about renovation yeah that's not a myth habitat really built homes from scratch for the first 20 25 mm -hmm. years and our affiliate did the same uh, because of the subprime mortgage crisis and the great recession there has been a glut of homes on the market uh, these homes have been foreclosed so people lost their homes in the 2007, 2008, 2009. So we've sort of changed our paradigm a little bit and are rehabbing homes. So we're able to get homes. This was begun by Bank of America. We, we were able to get homes for free from Bank of America. 
and rehab them. And what this has done is enable us to use a bunch of R words. We're able to relove these homes, recycle these homes, restore these homes, uh, repurpose them. We're putting families in for about a third of what it costs to do new construction. Wow. So that's good for our bottom line, but it's also good for the families. We are able to put them in at a cheaper cost, and it's good for the neighborhood. I mean, as you know, I mean, Norfolk, you drive down streets, and there's abandoned homes. The abandoned homes hurt the property values mm -hmm. in that whole neighborhood. They can be places of crime. They can get, you know, run down and just get worse. So when we get these homes and are able to rehab them and put a deserving family in them, it helps the whole neighborhood as well as that family. That's right. Now, um, let's talk about that family. How do you go about finding those families? Families come to us and we look for them. A lot of our families come through churches. Uh, Habitat is a faith-based organization. It was begun as a Christian organization. We now work with people of all faiths and I always say people of little faith or people of no faith. Uh, but churches are still our primary source. On our website, you can find an application. You apply to us. Once we get the application, we will check you out. We'll do a background check. Uh, we do home visits. We do screenings. We look for people, you know, one of the other, the big myth about Habitat is that we give homes away. Uh, we don't have a set of keys down our office mm -hmm. and just hand them to people. We, we have to identify the appropriate families who meet our qualifications. It's usually people who are low income who earn between 40 and 60 percent of the average median income. So we're looking for people in a sweet zone who are working people who couldn't otherwise qualify for a conventional mortgage. Uh, we train them. They have to work alongside with us. They have to put in what we call sweat equity on the, on the site. So they're learning to swing the hammer also and construct their homes. Uh, and then they purchase the homes from us for no interest mortgages. That's a key. The, the Bible Thank tells you. us two times not to charge interest. But, you know, we live in a society where interest is very mm -hmm. important. But by cutting the interest out, we're able to make the, for, the homes affordable for our families. Well, in closing, this is, June is the uh, uh, homeowner month, and what better way to do that but to really assist people to get into either a new home or a renovated home. So June is National Homeowner Month, and that's part of the reason I think we're here with you today. Uh, right. And we want to thank Norfolk for all the support. We're rehabbing a house in Norfolk right now on Huff Street and looking for more. All right. Well, thank you for everything that you've done, not only in Norfolk, but throughout the world. It's really appreciated. When we come back, we're actually going to have Timber Sports right here in Norfolk. Stay tuned. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspective. I got to be honest with you, normally with seven venues and scope, we have major singers. We got maybe wrestling going on. We've got Broadway. We've got all kinds of great stuff. Hockey, the whole nine yards. Timber sports was a new one for me. <laughs> Absolutely. So we had to bring in the expert. Brad Sorgan, how you doing? Oh, pleasure, sir. You're the executive producer for Steel Timber Sports Series. This is huge. Oh, yeah. We're looking forward to Norfolk. I mean, you talk about some of the best venues in the world. I mean, we've been in Hampton Roads with the Steel facility for seven, uh, for uh, over 40 years now. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us to come and actually share the wealth with the Hampton Roads families that we've you know, been part of for 40 years. Okay, now the city of Norfolk is a wonderful place to live. Mm -hmm. It's got great pines. It's got beautiful trees. But I don't see it as harvest time for timber. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's, you think about there's different uh, timber factories all over the country, and uh, the logging traditions are very widespread, but uh, the Steel Timber Sports Series is a national and international property. Uh, because of us being here local, we decided this is a good time to bring some of the best athletes from around the country, guys who have timber in their blood, literally, uh, bring the best of the best, both college and pro, to Norfolk Scope Arena June 20th through 22nd. It's going to be awesome. Now, do, are we going to be looking for timber to come down the Elizabeth River, or how do you get it here? Oh, absolutely. We, I, we got some guys that are uh, from New Hampshire that are actually, we call them the Grunit state lumberjacks and essentially we call them the wood monkeys lovingly we like them a lot uh, the guys will actually go to ohio harvest the wood from our timber farm and bring it into the norfolk scope arena specifically laved by tree uh, to make a round block that can be chopped for the athletes and sawed by the athletes okay now this is a competitive sport absolutely so yeah, it's, it's a legit there are sport. standards too mm -hmm. from year to year 
So how do you standardize the wood? Well, it, wood is a very variable. I mean, guys will tell you this wood was soft, this wood was hard. We try to make it as equal as possible. We mentioned it earlier, 100 yards is 100 yards. So by harvesting the same wood in the same location, we can say the conditions are pretty accurate from year to year. And this is the 29th year of the series, um, so we try to make it as easy as possible. When a guy sets a world record, we know he did it. Okay, now, Brad, with great glee last week, I cut down my dogwood tree in the backyard. <laughs> that was about that big, and it took me about two hours. Yeah. <laughs> so is this going to be a real long event? Uh, no, we got, got three full days of competition. Friday's okay. our knockout round on the 20th, so that's a little bit of a longer day. We're trying to winnow through all the college of programs. Saturday, we got three hours from 5 to 8 p.m. That's just the national championship for the pros. Sunday, we've got the college championships, and then some fun. We're going to have a relay event. Nothing better than guys with chainsaws and axes running around on stage trying to get the fastest time. That's going to be cool. Absolutely. Now, what's really <laughs> also neat about this is that uh, you can watch it live right here in Norfolk, mm -hmm. and there's somebody in Oregon or in Germany can watch it. Yeah, absolutely. We're live. going to do a live stream of the event that's going to go out on the web. Uh, then we're also filming it for both ABC and ESPN, so you're going to see those uh, events coming up uh, in prime time a little bit later in the year. Okay, now, uh, when I think of steel, I think of a great corporate uh, citizen, yes. great stuff that you guys do. I mean, you were just out on Park Place, in fact, uh, with, a, with a festival a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. But I also think of you as kind of the world-class power tools where are, where's your tool of trade? Well, you we know, we're, we're known for being the industry leader, you know, the uh, number one selling brand of gasoline-powered handheld outboard power equipment in America. Mm -hmm. um, but that's only a small portion of the Timber Sports series. So we figured, you know, I could bring in some chainsaws for you, but there's nothing more impressive than actually seeing the five-pound razor that Whoa. you swing between your legs uh, as quickly as possible to get those chopping blocks I did done. not cut my uh, dogwood down with one of those. No, you should definitely not chop trees Holy down. Holy moly. So uh, a typical axeman for the Timber Sports series will have about 20 of these in his axe box. And the purpose of it is the different types of grind, a little bit thinner, a little bit fatter. If the wood's nice and moist, you want to have a nice fine blade. But if it's a little dry you want to have or, and firm, you want to have something that's more like a, like a wedge or a maul. And so these guys are swinging this anywhere from you know, 15 to 20 times to chop through around 13 inches of white pine. Uh, wow. Swinging it five pound razor right between their legs each time. Uh, again, $500 axe, you can't get this at your local hardware store. Now I also know that steel produces uh, refined, high, high polished stuff. It's kind of rough on the end. Oh, yeah, certainly. It's not so, finished, is yeah, it? Yeah, we, we try to leave these when, uh, when we buy these. We actually get a lot of these axes from Australia. It's one of the only places where you can get competition racing axes. They send it over in a pretty rough fashion, and the reason behind that is, is uh, think about baseball or even um, golf. Mm -hmm. You want to customize your grip when you're, to feel comfortable when you're using this piece of equipment. Um, so there's going to be anywhere from uh, tape on this, a little bit of chalk. Some people may actually finish it themselves. It's more individual user choice. You have to feel comfortable with the, the tool. Um, same way that you would piece of uh, equipment anywhere. Um, so it's a comfort zone. Brad, who's your audience on this, do you think? Uh, it's anybody. I mean, to be honest, we have reached out from the 18 to 25 extreme folks. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've always blended pretty well with them, but it, it's really a family event. I mean, I see guys out there that have been loggers for years who want to join us. we got kids out there. My son is a huge fan. He sees it on TV, and he always thinks that's me. I'm not the big burly lumber Well, guy. we're going to talk about that in a second. <laughs> When I heard that you were coming on board, I, you know, who's the big guy that's, uh, that the song is about? But anyway, oh yeah, <laughs> the you're, not, you're not uh, Bunyan there. I, I mean, when I think of the timber guy, you ain't it. Oh, no, we, and we try to steer clear from that sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a real lumberjack. I just get to play one on TV. So I produce, uh, you know, th this amazing event, the Still Timber Sports Series. It's, it's ordinary people doing extraordinary things. We've got uh, lawyers who actually do this, physical therapists, guys who've got a history and tradition of logging in their blood who just come out and do something incredible. It the, really is the original extreme sport. So it's going to be uh, June 20th through 23rd? Yeah. Right there at Scope and Scope Plaza, right? Absolutely. Right on the, actually, it's going to be on the inside of Scope Arena, seating for 7,000. We certainly, uh, I hope folks come out and join us. Tickets are uh, on Friday and Sunday, only $5, and on Saturday, $10 for the national championship. You can't so beat that. We're just trying to have a fun time and just say thank you to the Hampton Roads community. I was going to suggest we go out with you uh, swinging that between your legs, but you know what? <laughs> Maybe we won't do that. Oh, please, no. I, you know, you got to put change in your pocket if you hit yourself <laughs> and make sure you walk the right direction. There we go. <laughs> well, thanks for everything that you're doing to bring the show right here to Norfolk, and we're looking forward to being here with you. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Bob. When we come back, we're going to be looking for spies aboard the Wisconsin. I hear they, they do exist. Stay tuned. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. 
Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives, and thank goodness we got the axes out of the studio because Stephen Kirkland's in here. <laughs> now, you wanted to play with that, that axe, How didn't you? How can I follow the guy with the axe? That was cool. <laughs> That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, you do swing that between his legs. He was demonstrating That's after we went That's pretty cool. PSA. I know. I know. He broke a table over there. I know. Right there. Okay, Stephen, I got I'm really surprised you're here because you are now the director of Nauticus. Right. So when we got talking about, you know, a spy ship, I figured you'd have some kid come over and tell us about spy ship because it's time to pass the baton. You're not willing to do that, though, are you? I can't you? do it, Bob. This I is can't your favorite project, I isn't love it? it. You know, this and the ghost in, in October, and uh, we got Christmas stuff coming up, holiday stuff. So it's, uh, I, I still like to, you know, I still like to um, be involved in that. Well, because I, I, I mean, are there spies? Because you really, you really didn't. I mean, the spot. Hey, come on. Here, here's the great thing about the battleship. It lends itself well to these type of stories. If you remember last year, we introduced spy ship. It was a way to get families engaged and on board yeah. and, and involved and sort of an interactive experience. And our, we focused on World War II um, off the coast of Iwo Jima, which of course, you know, the, the battleship actually served during that time. This year, it's 1952. We're off the coast of North Korea. The Korean conflict, um, oh, yeah. and so it's a whole different storyline, a whole different narrative. Um, I don't want to give anything away, but you'll actually end up at the place where the ship was hit only once in its career, um, on the starboard side, uh, off the coast of North Korea in March of 1952. So we want to try to tie in a little history as well. Cool. So, so kind of learn, but entertain. Yeah, yeah. Hey, is it really true that you're making people call you James? No? James. James Bond. <laughs> is that true? I'm 004. Oh, 004? 004, not yeah. quite there. Yeah, right? that's right. Okay. I wear the glasses around the office. Look, we're going to go back to Spy <laughs> Ship, because that, that's coming up. When's it going to open a Spy Ship? Opens June 16th. Okay. Um, I want to reel back a couple of weeks, though. This has been, okay, the duck. Let's talk about the duck. The duck was here. The duck was here. We tried to get the guns of the battleship turned <laughs> so we could shoot the duck, but we couldn't quite get there. No, no I love the There's a building duck. in the way. I love the duck. But... There were people flocking all over that place because you had not just the people coming from the dock. You had a lot of uh, no pun other stuff. I know. It. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you had a lot of people uh, to yeah. do a lot of different things. Yeah, it's been a let's face it. It's been a great uh, month to celebrate Norfolk. And, and the it, summer hasn't even started. It hasn't even started, you know. But it's been a great time to celebrate Norfolk with the duck and all the things that the zoo is doing and and just all the things that are happening. And we just wanted to contribute to that. So we um, launched our first. Um, benefit for our sailing program uh, called Frisky on the Whiskey. We had 500 people in the fantail of the battleship. We had a live band out there. Uh, we raised a little money for our, our uh, sailing program, which is hugely important to us. Um, we've had um, a Memorial Day service. We've had um, an Endless Summer premiere, you know, the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. of Endless Summer. Um, we've got a new paint job on the side of the building. We're, we've painted our letters and we're, we've added music outside and we just want to be a, a catalyst for Norfolk. So it's a fun place, but it also is a place for some reverence. You mentioned the Memorial Day thing. That Absolutely. was an awesome uh, reflect, time of reflection. Right. Um, so you can, you can kind of do it all, can't you? We can. You know, we, we've got a lot to offer. Obviously, um, we know how to do events really well. Um, and this summer, what we anticipate, of course, is lots and lots of people coming down, seeing Spy Ship and going on the battleship. Um, but really, our, our focus... Um, Aside from that is, is truly being a catalyst and, and being a driver for our local community. My, one of my goals is really to reintroduce our local community mm -hmm. to Nauticus. Those folks that think they know Nauticus. Um, they dare done that, yeah. I, I would, I would uh, encourage them to come back, and I think yeah. they'd be uh, mightily impressed. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, I, you know, I go over there quite a bit, but yeah. it seems like every time I go, there's something new. You have ammo now in front of the building? We do, yeah. We've got ammo in front of the building. We decided that was in the back, and we thought, let's put it, to the, put it in the front mm -hmm. and, and let people uh, see what a 2,000-pound shell looks like that was fired from those 16-inch guns. Um, we'll be doing Ed demos out on the battleship this year for the very first time. So, you know, we've had our great education team inside Nauticus for years, but we thought, well, let's, let's take them out on the ship. And um, so we'll, you know, our 1MC system is working, so the PA system for the ship, we want it to look and feel and be alive all summer long. So, And if you're out on the ship and have to take 
You we, can now. We have you bathrooms. Have bathroom. We have heads on the ship. Very. Oh, exciting. that's right. Heads. I'm sorry. We had a ceremonial first flush, which was really nice, and. Um, it, you know, but that seems like a, a small thing, but we haven't had working water on the ship, and so to use the restroom, you had to go inside. What that does, is, of course, is open up more possibilities for events at night and uh, all sorts of things. So. And I've got to tell you, during Memorial Day celebration, there's still the sweet smell of diesel. The smell of freedom, Bob. It's the <laughs> smell of freedom. Um, yeah, there is a smell inside the ship still, um, but you know. But that's what it's that's what that's it's about. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. This is not a recreation of a battleship. It's an actual battleship. Okay, you're not bringing 004. You're not bringing 007 back. You're bringing back the stories of real spies during Korea. Uh, we, we've taken a little liberty, but okay. uh, but we are you know the 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 historic uh, part that we want to convey to people is that uh, that ship really was there in 1952 off the coast of North Korea and, and uh, we want them to have a little fun. We've got laser mazes, we've got uh, all sorts of cool stuff. Cool. So what better way but to experience it this summer? Come see us. Down to Wisconsin. Come Thanks a lot for everything that you guys are doing. Thank to you. To not just bring fun, but reverence, education, and knowledge. Thank you. Thanks. When we come back, Enzo's going to be in the studio signing cookbooks just for you. Stay tuned. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. You know, I am loving this show. We're going from Axis to Spies to Enzo. Look at it, just on cue. We have Enzo here on the right-hand side. And I guess joining Enzo, Tracy Brune and Mickey Kilholt. Yes. And, and you are his mom? Yes, I'm his mom. <laughs> and tell me about Enzo. Where do you come from? Enzo came from the Norfolk Animal Care Center. He was a rescue um, at six months old. And I've always wanted a therapy dog, and he turned out to be the one. Cool. Now, a lot of therapy dogs are purebreds that are kind of trained to do that, but he, he wasn't destined to that when he was six months old, was he? Well, or prior to six months old? No. Um, we got him from the shelter. He was a stray, and uh, there was just something about him that melted my heart. <laughs> <laughs> and that might be it. Now, Enzo has kind of become the poster dog for the Friends of Animal Care Center cookbook. Mm -hmm. Who the, We have the person to your right who came up with this idea. Mm -hmm. And in full disclosure, I'm also on the board of Friends with Tracy. How's yeah. it going? It's going really so what well. So what do 1,100 cookbooks look like? They don't look like as many as I thought they would. Yeah. I was prepared to have my entire house invaded, but... They didn't take up as much room as I thought they would. But. Because they're going fast. They're going really fast. We've had seven uh, events, cookbook signings, which em Enzo's going to do. Enzo's going to do. He's going to demonstrate how he signs a book. But why, why should somebody buy this book? Well, Besides, it's a great cookbook. It, it, it is a great cookbook. But beyond that, all the funding that we uh, raise is going to go to help animals get placed in wonderful homes. Because, as you know, the city provides the basics, the initial vaccinations and the housing. And our group, with the funding that we raise, can help the staff there go that extra mile, uh, especially for some of the animals that come in. They're neglected. They're mistreated. Mm -hmm. Different conditions they come in. It takes a little bit extra. So we try to give them that little bit extra. But this has been a great marketing tool and kind of a let people know what we're all about because every section of the cookbook tells a story of a different uh, animal from our shelter. So. Now, Tracy, when you were on the last time, you were in, it was being in process. Yeah, we you were, were still You were still birthing. Editing and, yeah. And you were trying some of the foods. Now, 300 and some people have this cookbook. Are you hearing any feedback about how the recipes we've are? We've gotten really positive feedback. The funny thing is we've had a lot of people buy them that didn't go to a signing, and they're bringing them into the shelter wanting Enzo to sign them. To sign them. So he's becoming quite the celebrity. I understand. Yeah, it's going to his head a little bit. I think. You think so? It, yeah, he's now yeah, giving up on us. You had mentioned he jumped up on the sofa, and it's really kind of cool. I mean, that's what uh -huh. the sofa's for. Uh -huh. But you said that's part of his training, isn't it? 
Uh, yes, uh, he works at Lake Taylor's a therapy dog, and we go visiting in the rooms. He can get up on a chair to be on the level with the patient, and so they can pet him and talk to him. And there's there's the way of kind of giving part of yourself to a, a dog, and they're not going to judge you, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Mine does all the uh -huh. time, but that's <laughs> that's a different story. We'll talk about that in a different show. So, what do you what do you found to be the most rewarding part about this this book? I think it's been just a hoot going out to these events and meeting people and, and getting to tell them about what we do. Mm -hmm. Now, the book is also going to be available, is available at the... It's available at Nauticus in their gift shop, okay. the Zoo's gift shop, Lake Taylor Transitional Care Hospital's gift shop. Mm -hmm. We have a few copies at Why Not Pizza in Ghent. Okay. They're selling books for us. Um, and the shelter, you can go by the shelter, visit, get a cookbook. Now, when's the next book signing coming up? Uh, Whoopi's Dog Salon on Independence, June the 21st. We're going to do a cookbook signing and adoption event for the shelter. Cool. So it's kind of gone region wide too. Yeah. It's so whoever's so Enzo, you want to? Because he can. I mean, can we get him out of his leisurely mode Enzo, now? Enzo, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's sign a cookbook. Come on. Because I think we had some staff here that might be interested in a book signing, so maybe we can okay. sell this cookbook before okay. you leave. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here it is. Here it is. He loves signing the cookbook. There Good we go. Job. <laughs> What's great is he pauses too for photos because he knows we've made him repeat it because people wanted pictures of it. Good job. Good now, and I, Good boy. I know you posted, that as we were assembling these cookbooks, you posted on. Facebook that you were training him specifically to do this task. Yes. So he wasn't a book signer before this book came no, out. No, no. This is a, a skill that he has learned. How quickly did it take to, to teach him? Well, with a box of donut holes, about five minutes. <laughs> you mentioned the key word there. Don't, now you promised him a donut hole. What are you going to do about that, Millie? Chicken. <laughs> Now, the cookbook. Some people, I know when I've talked about the cookbook, they were kind of confused. Is it a cookbook for pet food? For human food? It's got a little both. bit of everything. The, the celebrity and chef creation sections, I think the biggest section of the book, that's got more than 45 recipes. And that's from area chefs and TV personalities, such as yourself, Bob. I, I had the pleasure. Got hmm? an award winning recipe in there. I know. And the back section is the tail wagon treats. And every event we've done, we've actually brought samples. So Enzo's favorite pizza cookies are in there. All right. We've given out a lot of those. And one thing that impressed my wife was the health food for the dogs. I mean, not some of the treats are good if you're looking for the wheat-free stuff and whatever. There's some oh, nice yeah, there's that. a little bit of everything. But I was kind of tempted because of making those. I mean, they're... We have eaten some of Enzo's pretty, cookies at these events. Good. We get a little hungry. We've decided they'd be really, really good with hummus. There might be a hummus recipe in there. Okay, so the sure. book, it's not just great recipes. It's also for a great cause because we can help. As you alluded to, mm -hmm. Norfolk Animal Care Center has to take all animals that come mm -hmm. in, and some of them may and not be And this time of year, their intake numbers go up considerably because it's, it's kitten season, it's puppy season. Yeah, so come on by and adopt and get a cookbook, and that will help. All for a good cause. And, and, meet mm -hmm. and, and meet Enzo. And get a photograph. Well, we have other celebrities, too. We, we have our Petunia the pig. She came out for one of our events. All mm -hmm. right. So you never know. Keep, keep an eye on the Friends Facebook page and yes. website. And we actually have Sit, Stay, Eat on Facebook. Okay. So. Thanks for everything that you guys have done to bring the awareness to us and also create an awesome cookbook. And Enzo, thank you. We want to hear mm -hmm. from you what you'd like to see on TV48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood. Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you, 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 and you. Thank you.